Thank you for joining us here at U.S. Cellular Thunder Training Camp. I'm alongside Alex Brinas and Jeremy Grant, part of a live chat where we're soliciting questions from fans on Facebook and Instagram at the OKC Thunder accounts. We've got a few fun questions for these guys, so thank you so much for joining us as you guys just got off the court here at the practice facility, hard at work building up for opening night against the New York Knicks. But I'm going to hit you with the heavy stuff first. You guys have any pets? Yes. It's Describe not, your pet. It's not really mine. It's from your fiance. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a small dog, uh, like a Maltese. So, I mean, it's pretty funny. It's not a kind of dog for a big, <laughs> tall guy, but it's really funny. I love it. He's a little yappy guy. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. playing all the time. I got. I have two dogs, uh, Scooby and Ice. Uh, Ice is a husky, about 70 pounds. Siberian husky is pretty big. Scooby's about 30 pounds. Is a Shiba Inu. How do they get along? Uh, actually, my, the the smaller dog, Scooby, uh, he kind of roughs up the big one. <laughs> <laughs> he rules the roost. Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> how have they? Uh, how have they liked the transition to Oklahoma? Did had, like zero problems. Yeah. We have more problems, me and my fiance. <laughs> She's like happy and running all over the place. So. Uh, yeah, no, nah, they love it here. Got a little yard, backyard they can run in and stuff like that. Uh, the Husky is kind of iffy about it. It doesn't really snow too much. Yeah, he needs a little bit colder weather. He likes the winter, I'm sure. Definitely. What, uh, what has been your favorite part of being in Oklahoma City, Jeremy? Uh, just the fans. Just, just everybody out here is, is so nice. Like being from the, the East Coast, you don't really get too much of Hey, how you doing? And uh, how, just how the fans react to to everybody here. So, just R the fans. Raymond Felton was telling me that his neighbors will wave to him every time he drives in, and they come over and ring his doorbell and see if he needs anything. Is is that what you've experienced, Alex? Yeah, like more the first year than, yeah. than this year, but yeah, especially with my neighbor, uh, Stephen. Uh, he's just texting uh, like every day, like if you want to go dinner or something. It's like sometimes like it. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. So the Oklahoma, the true Oklahoma City <laughs> treatment there. Um, just a reminder, we are soliciting questions from Facebook and Instagram, the OKC Thunder accounts. Thanks again to these guys for joining us and answering some of these questions. Alex, you, I'm glad that you're getting a little bit of some, some OKC family because I know that you had to leave yours to come here all the way from Spain. But you come from a, a basketball family. Your dad was a professional. Both of you do. I mean, Jeremy has uh, basketball roots all over his family tree. Just tell me what that was like growing up with, with a dad who played professional basketball. He was great. I mean, just like I was, I hate him a little bit when he was like my coach. But all my friends were saying like, hey, your dad was like a professional. He's like this, like a god, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. So just being around him and just listen to him, like uh, working with him, like at home, and he was my coach for four years. So it's been great and. And thanks f to him, I'm I'm here today. So, Jeremy, NBA fans will probably be quite familiar with with your family. Will you tell me about your dad and your uncle and, and your brother? Uh, just growing up in the family, uh, everything was competitive. Um, just having uh, my dad and my uncle both playing the league. Um, both of them twins. Both of them obviously wanted to have a the the better career. So it was always competition there. So uh, just kind of growing up. It kind of just trickled down to, to me and my brothers, um, especially me, me and my brother in, in Chicago. Um, actually, all of us, <laughs> really. Uh, it's, it's always been a competition, so I think um, that's definitely helped build and, and shape uh, who I am today. Jeremy's talking about his brother, Jerry, and his dad, Harvey Grant, and uncle, Horace Grant, who played in the NBA for a long time, had great, great success. They also played in some in some tough playoff battles, which you guys got to experience firsthand for the first time last season. What? Just share with me what you guys thought about your playoff experience for the first time. I mean, it was pretty good. <laughs> we lost four <laughs> times and just won one. Uh, but I mean, just being here for the first season and playing playoffs uh, when the uh, like the real basketball starts, uh, it's been great. I learned a lot. Uh, of like you gotta be 100 percent on and off the court, just watching some film and prepare for the next game. And I mean, it's been great. Jeremy, was there anything that surprised you? Maybe just you know how crazy it was, how fast it was. Anything that kind of took you by surprise in your first playoff run? Um, people people always told me about how the playoffs would be, and I kind of got to experience it from the outside. But once you get in, it is it's different. Um, just ex being able to experience it. Uh, Everything is moving extremely fast. Everybody is 
just focus. I think uh, that's that's one of the biggest things. Everybody's focused on and off the court, and always preparing for the game. So, I think just being able to experience that is is definitely going to help us going forward. One thing that our fans have been focused on is the Jeremy Grant hair watch. It's been different over the last six months or so. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what's going on? What's what's what are you trying out over the last six months or so? Uh, just going with the flow. <laughs> uh, however I feel that day or however I feel that week, uh, I just got to do it. Um, I don't like to try to restrict myself. Can you describe to the fans like the different styles that you've tried out lately? Uh, I had two strand twists. Um, I, I locked it up at, at one point. Um, kind of like a, not a high top fade, but kind of like a medium fade. Um, just a bunch of braids, a lot of different things. What do you think about those styles, Alex? No comment. No worries. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I mean, it's got to be better than, than Steven's long, flowing, yeah. <laughs> maybe showered, maybe not showered hair. Looks like a don't. <laughs> 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 All right. I like to do this exercise when I have a couple guys here together. I want you to describe one another's game. So, Jeremy, I'll start with you. Why is Alex so difficult to defend on the court? I think um, – his elusiveness, uh, just being able to shoot, um, you have to close out hard. So uh, once you close out hard, he also has the ability to, to get to the basket, and he's uh, a little bit athletic. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, depends on the day. But no, it's, it's, it's definitely hard to guard that, uh, just him being able to, to do multiple things. Alex, now the reverse here. Why is Jeremy so difficult to score on? I mean, he's known as one of the best – most versatile defenders on the team? I mean, he's so athletic, long arms. Uh, what can I say more? Like, he can close out from the paint <laughs> <laughs> with a stick hand and being able to do, like, like he said, like multiple efforts, like close out and then uh, reach out to the block shot. So, I mean, even when he's not defending the ball, he puts a lot of pressure on the guards when they drive it to a basketball. Just jump in, get those block shots. You're teasing about Alex's athleticism coming out in different <laughs> parts of the game. I want to ask both of you, uh, what was your favorite dunk from last season? I have one in mind, but I'm yeah. guessing it might be the same one. <laughs> yeah, the one I did on, Green, on Tristan Thompson against Cleveland. Yeah, that was Probably incredible play. <laughs> Pump fake from the yeah. perimeter and then goes in nasty two-handed dunk over Cleveland Cavaliers' Tristan Thompson. Jeremy, you have a little bit more material to work with. <laughs> what, was, what was your favorite dunk from last season? Uh... I'd say my favorite dunk, probably the Grizzlies dunk where I had a little reverse. Uh, kind of late game situation. Uh, it wasn't the game wasn't over, uh, but it was okay. it was kind of kind of close at the end. Jeremy helped put that one away. Marcus Gasol was trying to tra- track you down there, yeah. and he almost got a piece of you. But yeah. <laughs> at the last second, my the thing that I always wondered after that play is like, was that just all instinct? in reaction, and how, how can you decide in midair, I'm not going to dunk this normal, I'm, i got to go under the rim? Uh, yeah, it was instinct. Um, I kind of just went up. I went up to just finish it on that side, and I kind of seen him really close, so just instinctually I uh, just brought it to the, to the other side. Alex, you're familiar with the Gasols from your time playing with the Spanish national team. What was that like in your first experience being over here, getting to play against some of these guys with their own teams and in this professional setting? I mean, actually, it was the first time I played against them. Uh, I mean, I practiced with them yeah. national team, but when you play against Spanish guys, it feels, like, good. I mean, they're heroes for, for Spain, for the basketball players, for, like, non-basketball players. And just being uh, able to to play against those guys and hard guys feels, feels pretty good. We've been getting a lot of love on Facebook and Instagram where fans are sending in questions uh, for our live chat here with Alex and Jeremy. A lot of love from New Zealand. And you guys have a a guy on your team in Steven Adams (laughs) who projects to be one of the best centers in the league moving forward, just like Marc Gasol and Pau Gasol, who who we were just talking about. Just tell me about your first – do you even remember, like, when you first met Steven Adams, Jeremy, do you remember like what that was like and, and what, what that was all about? Because I'm sure you both yes. have some stories. Yeah, I, I remember uh, my first time meeting him was uh, playing against him in college uh, when, at Pittsburgh. He was at Pittsburgh and I was at Syracuse. And we went up against him and uh, my first thought was 
he was the strongest guy I ever played against. <laughs> just the way he kind of puts you on his basket. But actually getting to, to talk to him and meet him here, um, nah, he's just he's an interesting guy. I mean, he <laughs> he has a lot to say, and uh, no, nah, he's, he's definitely a great great guy though. What about your first impression of Stephen Adams? <sighs> uh, I can't remember the year, but it was one of those years I came here. They finally invited me to to like visit the city, yeah. and he was working out and with short hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to him, and I mean, he was like really funny. He was like explaining me some kind of like trip to Croatia, I think. So I mean, I just have good words for him. Uh, he's always been a good friend, and it's really funny and it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Jerry> said, <laughs> really, really smart. Can talk about just about any subject, which yeah. is I, I think is always amazing about Stephen. You can talk, be talking about anything, and he's got something to say. Jeremy, you just brought up your Syracuse days. We got a Syracuse legend now in the building in Carmelo Anthony. What's this been like for you to experience him come into the organization? I'm sure when you were in Syracuse, that was, you know, he was kind of the pinnacle of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been great just to be able to have him kind of here, just um, kind of being able to watch him, being able to see uh, the way he, he prepares for, for the games and things like that. Uh, I think uh, it, it's big for me. He plays my position, so just to be able to sit back and watch uh, somebody of his stature, and um, obviously um, being at Syracuse and things like that, I, I know him before this, but just being able to, to watch him up close and personal is uh, is, is going to be big for, for me going forward. Alex, your thoughts on how he changes the dynamic of this team and the way you guys might play? Uh, I mean, for me, it's a guy like uh, he can open the floor, playing as a four, and just uh, be able to pass the ball as he did and get open shots to, to me or Paul George. Some of the guys have Jeremy also been shooting the ball pretty good. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, just having him and, and Paul George and Ross and playing with those guys is, is like you, it's all done. Like, you got to wait till the ball comes and, and let it fly. Uh, you just brought up something I was going to ask you guys anyway. <laughs> Both of you were about 37% from three last season, some of the best marks on the team. Alex set some rookie records for a Thunder uh, guard shooting three-pointers. How many shots do you guys get up per day at practice from behind the three-point line? I don't even count them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's pretty hard. A lot. Uh, before practice, after practice, and then uh, maybe come back later at night. So. I don't count them, but it's a lot. I'd say like, yeah, like three to five hundred. A little bit more. Wow. You think so? I mean, I mean, if you count like the practice, actually, um, top and all and all this stuff. A ton. Yeah, it's for, yeah. Do you guys have like? Do you guys have like competitions, like one-on-one -on -one competitions or anything like that, or team competitions where you where you're trying to see who can shoot the most, make the most threes? I should say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, last yeah. year we got like a hundred drill. It's just like, I think like six spots, you shoot 10. Then it's like 15 in each side, like moving, like mm -hmm. shaping up and, and slide downs. And then you got like 10, like on five positions, mm -hmm. shooting just one in each position. So last year we got that exercise and it was on the board. Uh, the guy who got more was on the top and the less on the bottom. But so I mean, we're in different separate groups, so okay. mm -hmm. it's kind of like everybody come competitions with some other guys, not together. Alex I'd works. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alex usually works with, with the guards with assistant coach Darko Ryakovich. I'm pretty sure it's just because he can speak Spanish and Alex likes that and likes to pretend like he can't speak yeah, English sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but Jeremy works with Thunder assistant coach Adrian Griffin. He works with some of the forwards. He had a long NBA career and kind of could do it all. How, how has he been in terms of shaping your game? Uh, he's been great. Just, uh, being with him for the last two years um, has been great. Uh, just been able to kind of learn from him. Obviously, him him playing in the NBA for for a while. He was a forward. Back then, you didn't have to be as tall. But um, no, nah, he just he does a great job of teaching me uh, the spots that I need to be in and and how to get there and just kind of helping me with my shooting. You guys are both so young. Seems like you know you guys are still growing, not just. You know, in your games, but physically you've both bulked up. Jeremy, I'm just curious your summer off-season routine in terms of how you've 
put on more muscle or just kept your body in tip top shape? Uh, just a lot, just a lot of lifting. Um, not pushing uh, a ton of weight. Uh, I think I, I worked a lot smarter this summer rather than just going for it uh, so I can keep the weight on. Um, I did a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to explain it, but um, just five days a week lifting, um, playing, shooting, working out, and uh, just keeping going, eating right. Alex, you talked earlier this week as you kind of made your return back to practice in full contact that some of the work that you've done this off season, your hoping is really going to pay dividends in your pick and roll coverages and that type of thing. Just will you tell the fans what, what you were up to this summer? I mean, I was here for uh, close to a month uh, working out with either guys. And as you said, like uh, the, the practice every day was one hour of lifting and then you jump into the court, work on your skills, maybe play some life uh, one on one, two or two or three and threes. And then I went back to to Mallorca, to Spain, and, and Mario Lark and Darko, uh, the, the physio and Angelo, came over and, and just worked with me for 10 days or so. And after that, I started with the national team, so it was kind of nonstop. Our fans on Facebook and, and Instagram have been sending these questions in. They're so interested just in every aspect of what you guys do. Um, they're also curious about jersey numbers. That's been one of the questions that we always get, whether there's any significance behind either of your jersey numbers. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine? Uh, not really. Uh, 39 is when I came to the league. That was my number. I kind of wanted to switch it up, but keep it kind of similar. So uh, nothing nothing really behind it. 39 was where you were drafted mm -hmm. in, the, in the NBA draft, correct? Yeah. That was sort of a motivational yeah. tactic, I think. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Just explain that to the fans, kind of what your mindset was when you first came into the league and you decided, I'm going to be a guy with a chip on my shoulder. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Uh, I thought I, I should have been drafted a little bit higher. So um, just being drafted 39, it was, I mean, that's what, that's the jersey number I wore. Uh, that was a chip on my shoulder. And, uh, just as a constant reminder that, I got to keep working because I got to show everybody uh, what I'm capable of. The fans want to know if you're capable of being in the NBA dunk contest too, because I think they'd like <laughs> to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see when they ask. Yep. If you had to like pit somebody else on the team against Jeremy in, in a dunk contest, who would you pick? Not <laughs> 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 who, who could like who could give you the best challenge? You think on the team? Uh, Ferguson, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he seems like a guy who can. There's no question gets his athleticism into the game. Mm -hmm. Will you just describe what you've seen from him as a rookie so far in training camp? Uh, I mean, he's he's been aggressive. I mean, on the defensive mm -hmm. and offensive, and I think uh, I think playing overseas for a year uh, definitely helped him kind of uh, get into the flow of things, even at a young age. Um, he might be skinny, but he, he definitely knows where to be on the court. And, and just because he's skinny doesn't mean he's, he's not strong. That was, that was skinny last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> takes time, but. <laughs> <laughs> takes time. But he A lot of ways. He, he can get this one. He can get it. I'm guessing, I'm guessing like one of the reasons you're most happy to have a guy like Terrence Ferguson around is you don't have any rookie duties anymore. Are you thankful oh, for still, that? I still have 10 days of rookie duties. Until what do you have to do? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how it works. Until the season starts, Thunder fans, even second year guys like Alex still have to what? What do you have to do? I mean, just bring food to the airplane to some of the guys, and, and that's pretty much it. Not much at all. How was how was that if it, at all different for you when you came to the NBA in terms of the travel, Jeremy? I know I'm sure at, at a big time program like Syracuse. You guys were probably flying private and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Was that how you guys operated in Spain as well? Uh, with uh, like uh, European like league, mm -hmm. uh, the Euroleague, we travel with a charter, not like this one, <laughs> smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> we got like kind of like two seats for for each player, and then for for the Spanish league, it actually depends. Sometimes we took the train, uh, took like two hours and a half to get to Madrid, or or just like uh, regular flights. So. It's a big difference. Yeah. Was yeah. there anything else that sort of you were surprised by or, or that opened up your eyes when you came to the NBA? In terms of the schedule, in terms of how much I you mean, travel yeah. and that type of thing? I mean, you, you're on a plane 24-7. That's like the biggest difference between here and, and Europe. Uh, 
taking up the plane every day or every two days. So that's the toughest part of being an NBA player, I think. How, in the course of that, our fans have asked on Facebook and Instagram, how do you guys continue to get better during the season when you have all of that travel? And specifically, I guess, what goals do you have as individuals for your games this upcoming season? I'll start with you, Jeremy. Uh, goals, just to continue to stay consistent uh, in my shooting, uh, just continue to get it better, uh, more sharp. And then um, just to, to help the team however I can. Um, I think to stay consistent throughout the year uh, with, the, with the busy travel schedule and things like that, I think you kind of just got to be willing to invest the time that you do have um, off the court or, or the time that you do have after practice and things like that to, uh, to the game. Alex, what about you? You had a whole year to kind of look at how your game can fit in with this group. Where can you take the next step this season? Uh, I mean, just uh, I know it's going to be hard to get the ball <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but, I mean, it depends on which uh, players I'm on the court. Uh, just I play more off the ball with cuts, with uh, uh, off screens, and, and get open shots. And if I'm with if Russ or PG or Melo are not on the court, maybe I can play like some pick and rolls, like create for other guys, and and also like do what I can do as like the best is like shooting. Yeah. Well. Obviously, Paul George and Carmelo Anthony changed the the math for this Thunder team in terms of just the options that it has on the floor, what it can do. But you're still coming back with the reigning NBA MVP. <laughs> what is that like? I, I'll, I'll start with you, Alex. What was that like coming into the NBA your first year mm -hmm. and learning how to play with Russell Westbrook? It was great. I mean, being around him and this special year for him that he played really good. Uh, he helped me a lot, especially because I was a rookie. And he was, like, uh, teaching me in every practice and off the court, like when we were on the, on the road. He was taking me to dinner to the cinema and he was like talking to me so uh he's also an mvp of the court uh most of the people doesn't know this but but he's a great guy and i really appreciate how much uh, he did for the team and uh for the community in Oklahoma. jeremy some moments you know, you'll block a shot into the second row you get a monster dunk and russ will come over and pretty much tackle you <laughs> and in the huddle he's so intense and so fired up just can you describe what that's like to be in those moments on the court with with Russ? Uh, it's, like you said, it's intense, but it's it's great. Um, it's easy to feed off of his energy. Um, whenever you do something uh, positive on the court or or even negative, uh, he's there to teach you or he's there to to pump you up. So I think uh, just being on the court with him, uh, his his energy is contagious. Um, it kind of just shows i mean obviously last year with with him being on on the team just giving everybody uh, a ton more energy uh, to kind of push us and will us to to the playoffs and 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 to in the first in the first round so i mean just being on the court with him is i mean i mean it's emotional he's electrified this city and as a result fans are in eager anticipation for the first game of the season against the knicks we had a uh, Twitter, I mean, an Instagram question, I should say, about that opening night game against the Knicks and the return of Ennis Cantor. How much do you guys miss him <laughs> around here and just his, his spirit? I mean, Thunder fans love Ennis and what, what he said and brought to Oklahoma City. I think we really miss him. I mean, I miss those moments when uh, him and, and Stephen Adams were talking and yelling at each other. <laughs> he was really funny. And I don't know, those tweets he posting <laughs> during the year it's like you can play with him and it was really funny and i really miss him are you gonna have to become the like new not stash bro oh no not I on twitter shave, no. i need to shave that <laughs> <laughs> beard only so, yeah okay that's a shame who, who <laughs> could who could be the who could be the next stash bro i mean is nick collison gonna have to grow a mustache now uh, <laughs> I, guess, I guess so uh yeah i gotta be the nick or you got a little oh yeah, yeah. darko <laughs> Russ claims that he doesn't have to shave, so he's yeah, automatically out. So, yeah. 
Maybe one of the new guys can pick up the slack. Patrick Patterson, maybe? I don't know. Oh, he, could, can, he could probably grow a nice mustache. He, he seems to have that nice, thick yeah, beard. I mean, yeah, not, but... not Lobenzo-style beard, but, I mean, <laughs> 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 that's Wolverine for Thunder fans. Uh, back in Spain, that was your nickname. Yep. One of our questions from Facebook that we've been getting from fans is, have you found any place to get paella in Oklahoma City? Uh, Darko Fox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, does he cook it himself no, or does no, his no. wife? His wife. Okay. Okay. His wife cooked it and it was pretty good. I took it once last year and I mean, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> <laughs> what is what did she, did she put into the recipe? Because I know sometimes uh, paella can be different based on yeah, the different I mean, it can ingredients. Be like, uh, yeah. yeah, like with seafood or with meat. We can put like uh, some veggies, like uh, chicken wings or uh, we also put like rabbit in Spain. Or you can put like... Uh, uh, they call it clam shells. Or uh, yeah, like clams. Yeah, yeah like clams, just muscles, like kind of yeah. Yeah, muscles, like okay. seafood, and, uh, shrimps also. So there's like two different kinds of paella. Jeremy, you missed the trip to Spain that we took last mm -hmm. season. Uh, what have you learned from Alex since being his teammate about his homeland and, and where he comes from? Uh, him and him and Domas last year used to talk a lot. <laughs> I used to try to jump into conversations. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, no, nah, he definitely, he definitely takes a lot of pride in in, in his, his home country. So uh, just hearing anything he has to say about it is, is definitely is definitely um, a learning experience for me. We're gonna wrap up with one final question. We thank you fans so much uh, on Facebook and Instagram at our OKC Thunder accounts for sending in questions to us, and thank you also to Alex and Jeremy for joining me today. Uh, last thing for both of you, just heading into the season, you guys are most likely going to be a part of the, the bench unit, the reserve unit that comes in, tries to sustain leads or extend leads. I'm just curious, from your vantage point, what, what is your goal as a group in order to try to help this team win the most games possible? W what I are think, the things that you're going to have to do and produce on every single night? I think uh, just coming into the game off the bench, we got to provide a, a lot of energy. Um, Regardless of if the first unit is is uh, playing well or or needs help, I think um, I think we just got to come in the game and provide a, a lot of energy, a spark off the bench, um, just in order to to keep everything going or to like you said ex extend leads. Alex, from a technical standpoint, what are some things that either in in the box score or just on the court you guys are going to have to do on a night to night basis? We will have. To work a lot more on the teamwork, like moving the ball from the side to side. Uh, uh, I mean, we don't have obviously the talent as as the first unit have, but we can play basketball. And I mean, we just gotta move like the ball uh, and just find the uh, the open shooter or the open uh, guy who can drive and get a layup. Alex and Jeremy, thank you guys so much for joining us today here at US Cellular Thunder Training Camp. Thank you to the fans for being here, following us watching and sending in your questions. We really appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. We're excited for a week from today.